But we begin tonight still awaiting a verdict in the trial of five members of the far-right extremist group, the Proud Boys, for their role in the violent attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. All five, including the group's former leader, Enrique Tarrio, are charged with seditious conspiracy. This is the group that Donald Trump famously told to stand back and stand by during the 2020 campaign. Along with other far-right groups like the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys descended on the nation's capital, heeding Trump's call for what he promised was going to be a wild time. The jury is expected to continue its deliberations on Monday. And while the Republican Party would like nothing more than to be able to move beyond the insurrection, the party's standard bearer is making that all but impossible as he continues to make litigating the 2020 election and the big lie the main component of his 2024 campaign. Trump yet again pushed those debunked conspiracy theories last night at a campaign stop in New Hampshire. But probably more problematic for Republican Party leaders is his continued embrace of the January 6th insurrectionists themselves. Last night, he quite literally embraced one of the rioters who spent 160 days in prison for her actions that day. Trump told her to hang in there and that they were going to be okay. What they say is I so sad what they've done to January 6th. So bad. Patriots, I mean, I hear right you. Right right here. Terrific here. Woman. It turns out that terrific woman, Mickey Larson Olson, is a QAnon supporter who told NBC's Vaughn Hilliard last year that she wants members of Congress, as well as former Vice President Mike Pence, to be executed for treason. Those were domestic terrorists inside our Capitol, and I'm going to prove it on my trial. Who are the domestic terrorists? Our Congress. Our Congress that's been stealing elections for a very long time. Our country's been under admiralty law since 1871. What should the punishment for those members of Congress be? Execution for being traitors. That's what our Constitution demands. Our dem Constitution demands that traitors in our nation are executed. And that's what should happen to each and every person that hijacked the voice of we the people. Is that something that you see actually happening? Yes. That's Trump's wonderful woman. And let's not forget that Trump has also claimed that he might pardon those charged in the insurrection if he reclaims the presidency. He even went so far as to record a song with some of the insurrectionists who are still incarcerated awaiting trial. That song is now being used as part of his campaign events. While most Republicans remain silent about Trump's continued adoration for this group, recently ousted Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney tweeted this warning to her former colleagues. Trump is embracing a J6 defendant who called for the execution of members of Congress. To elected Republicans who have endorsed him, you are endorsing his conduct on January 6th and every day since. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California, a member of the House Judiciary and Homeland Security Committees, and Harry Littman, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General, Senior Legal Affairs Columnist for the Los Angeles Times, and host of the Talking Feds podcast. Thank you both for being here. Congressman, I will start with you. Your reaction to Donald Trump literally embracing a QAnon-supporting insurrectionist who wanted people like yourself to be executed. Uh, Joy, these are the foot soldiers of MAGA Nation, and they're doing exactly what Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, and the MAGA Nation want them to do, which is to carry out violence in their name. And they try and be cute about it by, you know, saying, stand back, stand by. Uh, but in, in all of their signaling, uh, they are telegraphing that they want violence because they refuse to condemn the violence. And, and so, uh, you know, the sedition charge uh, here uh, against uh, you know, the Proud Boys leader is likely, uh, and I'll leave it to the jury, uh, is likely to stick uh, because the aim uh, of the violence they carried out was to try and overthrow the government uh, that was counting the votes. And, and so, Joy, uh, you know, it's also, uh, as we step back and look at accountability for January 6th, uh, you know, the Department of Justice can play their part. But if the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, is going to continue to meet with January 6th, uh, you know, he met with Ashley Babbitt's family uh, recently, we just learned today, and allow his members to go to the January 6th jail. Uh, that's just a green light uh, for more violence to be carried out in the name of MAGA Nation. Seems so. Uh, Harry Litton, let, let's go to this trial, because I wonder if it surprised you that they have not reached a, ju uh, a verdict as yet and that they are going to have to continue deliberating. What does that tell you as a former prosecutor? 
I would say not a lot yet. So it's been two days after a trial of some four months with five defendants, nine different charges. I think any jury that's carefully sifting through the individual charges would have taken exact about this amount of time at a minimum. Uh, the congressman has been a prosecutor, and he would might probably concur. Three days, four days, that seems normal. You start I to do. really bite your nails at the five or six day mark. So I, I don't think this is anything um, uh, unusual or surprising so far. Congressman, it sounds like you were agreeing. Uh, yeah, again, you know, very rarely would they come back so swiftly. But, you know, that's uh, 45 uh, different counts if you break it out uh, with five defendants uh, and nine charges. And a diligent, responsible jury will give uh, every defendant for each charge, uh, you know, uh, the benefit of the doubt, which is, you know, that the state has to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. And that takes time. So not much you can read in to here. I would be interested to know what types of questions are coming back. Yeah from the jury, uh, if any at all. But again, this seems uh, pretty standard. Uh, Harry, let me let me go back to you on this, because so, so what we do know is that these are the, some of the texts that we saw going from Oath Keepers um, who were connected to other far right groups, the three percenters um, uh, and others. So Kelly Meggs, who was the leader of the Florida chapter of the Oath Keepers, which is one of the other main groups, militia, started reaching out to allies and other far right organizations. The militia had sought to create what prosecutors referred to as an alliance with the Proud Boys and the three percenters. Meggs told a member of the three percenters he had made contact with the Proud Boys and called them a force multiplier. Supplier. There is video here that you will see that you'll show that shows Enrique Tario, a documentary filmmaker, took this video. This is the garage meeting on January 5th. Um, the video included a portion in which you could hear someone saying it's inevitable. It's going to happen. We just have to do it strong and fast. This video includes Stuart Rhodes, Enrique Tario, Kelly Sorrell, a lawyer for the Oath Keepers, Bianca Gracia, who's the leader of Latinos for Trump, which also Enrique Tario used to be the leader of, Joshua Macias, um, who helped to roll, a, a group, run a group called Vets for Trump. We know that Tario sent... Um, a document saying 1776 returns, and it outlined a January 6th style attack, according to the Department of Justice. The plan was to occupy a few crucial buildings in Washington, D.C. on January 6th, including House and Senate office buildings outside the Capitol, with as many people as possible to show our politicians we're in charge. We know that several Oath Keepers were convicted of seditious conspiracy. Do their convictions tell us anything about this trial, since they were working so closely together? Well, it's a really interesting and important point, Joy. And there's this amoeba-like quality of these groups. Even the woman that Trump embraced, she's no longer QAnon. She has got a new group. We see this in the international realm as well, where it's very hard for the government to kind of keep up because a trial is a snapshot of criminality when it happened. This, in the theory here of the government and seditious conspiracy is always a hard charge to prove. Is that what the Proud Boys were and wanted to be was the spear going forward, because their numbers wouldn't permit the attack on their own. So they did need to combine, including with people who just got caught up in the moment. So yes, that garage uh, video I found really um, alarming, specifically not just for the charges themselves on January 6th, but for what it portends of the continuing kind of evolution and uh, new emergence of groups in different forms. Right. And, you know, Congressman, the only group that was called out specifically by Trump, and he was asked to condemn far right groups and condemn white nationalist groups. The Proud Boys were named. He said, stand back, stand by. We know there was an immediate response. They changed their logo to add stand back and stand by. They responded to him on social media that that sort of interaction wasn't direct, but it definitely was. They directly felt he was talking to them. It just as you look at it, both as a member of Congress and also as a former prosecutor, does that that tell you that it would be very difficult to convict Oath Keepers for seditious conspiracy, but not the group that was literally told to stand back and stand by. Again, Joy, I'll leave it to the jury. This is their job. Uh, but it looks like, you know, they may have worn, uh, you know, different uh, colors uh, that day, but they were all essentially uh, on the same team and they had uh, the same charge. Uh, but to the larger picture here, I, I do believe that uh, what the American people are looking at, they're grateful that the Department of Justice continues to aggressively prosecute these cases. Uh, but January 6th, and, and who was responsible, I put it in two camps. Uh, you had the hustle and you had the muscle. 
And the muscle uh, are the, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, the groups that went in there committed uh, to carrying out violence, and they have been aggressively prosecuted. The country now, though, is asking, when is the hustle going to be responsible? And the hustle is Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, the people who spun up incited, inspired, and aimed the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers at the Capitol. And I think for complete justice to happen, uh, the hustle and the muscle uh, need to be, uh, you know, completely uh, held accountable.